are preppers crazy a little bit okay listen there are some there are some preppers who are like legit just passionate about survivalism and stuff and that those people are cool but for every one prepper who is like a just a, a, a fanatic about survivalism there are a bunch of paranoid delusional violent right-wing nut jobs whose entire purpose is to convince the world that it's going to end tomorrow and then immediately die when their house gets raided by actually capable people like it's really bad like okay look i have a lot of respect for people who like who are really into survival like you want to know who i have a lot of respect for somebody who's kind of like prepper ish Bo of the fifth column Bo of the fifth yes exactly but Bo's approach is very different than the american prepper the american <laughs> prepper will go to costco and buy nine thousand cans of food for no reason whatsoever they'll like buy little fad fad products that are marketed to them as like survival food and shit like and and then and then they have no actual skills they never go out in the woods they don't know anybody in their neighborhood they don't have any plans set up they just buy things that make them feel like they're being a survivalist military meals and all of this shit it, it, it's actually really fucked and and um re like people who are passionate about survivalism they like to go camping they like to learn how to fish they will cook you fish that they catch which is super cool bear scare beauty thank you so very much for the subscription really appreciate that and remember the show is always free always viewer supported so your subscriptions are what keeps the lights on quite literally so thank you um Oh, there's, listen, okay, so let me tell you something. You all know I grew up in New England. Something that a lot of people don't know about rural areas in New England is that, um, hey, thank you so much, Cuddles Bricks. Really appreciate the $15. That means the world to me. So in New England, most elementary and middle school and even high school sometimes have survival and, um, and forestry and stuff like that as a part of their curriculum. So when I, in the state that I lived in, I learned how to identify local edible foods, how to forage. I learned uh, how to make tr animal, tr like wild animal traps in the wild. I learned how to make a fire. I still remember how to do that. I learned how to make shelters, all kinds of wild stuff. It's super, super cool. Um, yeah, I learned how to watch out for poison ivy. I learned how to do, how to purify water and clean water. I learned how to check for and remove ticks, all kinds of stuff like that. I love that stuff. The survivalism stuff is actually super cool and it's useful. If you go out in the woods, it's very helpful to know these things. For example, some people never go camping because they're scared of bears. Well, unless you live in brown, in grizzly bear country, you have nothing to worry about about a bear. Bears, especially black bears, are the biggest scaredy cats in the entire universe. Not kidding. Not kidding. They are literally a joke. You, All you need to do is yell and clap your hands above your head and a bear will shit its pants and run away. I'm not kidding you. They're the biggest cowards. Um, so yeah. It, it's like, I don't know. Anyway, the point is that there's a lot of skills that are useful with regard to survivalism. Um but preppers almost never actually use those things preppers usually just l like go on the internet and buy uh buy fancy products that are marketed to them like oh this is a magical technological oh this is this is a it's the it's the it's the survivo pod and you could put anything in here and it'll last you 40 years if you leave it in your cabin and then they have no fucking clue what about a mother bear and her cubs listen if, if you're standing literally between a mother bear and her cubs, she might get mad. But other than that, the cubs will run away first and then the mom will run after them. Yeah, polar bears. How many of you live near polar bears? How many of you live near polar bears? Okay, let's be real. Sam Squanch, listen, Sam Squanch, just, he's just down hard, okay? That's all. He's just down bad. That's all. carry with you an, an unopened if you want to be safe from sam squanch carry with you an unopened fleshlight and just give it to him as a gift and he'll be fine oh is that the one with the punch is this the one with the punch oh yeah i've seen this one yeah i've seen that one 
Oh, boars are boars are mean. Yeah, boars are mean, and and moose can be mean too. Moose can be really mean. Moose will fuck you up if you piss them off. Yeah, that clip is cool. Yeah, thirty to fifty wild boars. Hey, thank you very much, Little Gray Pearl, for the subscription. Really appreciate that. And the Kevin FM, thank you so much for the subscription. Really appreciate that. Thank you so much. Really, really appreciate that a lot. Um, so here's the thing. Um, m most people look. I've I've lived with a prepper, and my uncle was also a prepper. And uh, my uncle, all that his prepping did for him was teach him how to make really crappy salsa and my old roommate didn't it didn't do anything she just spent money on it all the time so yeah the the, the she means he was on prep listen prep i'm not talking about preppers that type of preppers prep is a uh is a very very amazing drug that can protect you. And if you are at risk, you should consider prep. You can look it up. But preppers are, are not. You're prepping for pride by getting an HIV test? That's a good idea. Did you know that uh, HIV tests are basically free these days? And you can get them. And it will, imp it will give you something that can... It will encourage... Not only can it help you know if you're at risk... But it can also give you something to help reassure your partners that you aren't infected. Wow. Super cool. Get HIV tests, people. Responsible and safe sex. I'm serious. Need bug out bags and have good physical fitness? Honestly, yes. Obviously, physical fitness is good. But if you know, listen... Let me tell you something honestly. If you know how to identify safe food in the wild, you're going to last longer than 99% of your... Uh, oh, and to make clean water and to gather clean water and stay warm. Those are the three things you need. If you can identify food, if you can um, find uh, clean water and you can... Um, and you can set up a reasonable shelter that will keep you warm, you'll outlast everyone. You're going to be... You'll be fine. You'll get, you'll get physically fit out there. Yeah. That's true, Gayfesh. It is possible, but it's much safer. Yeah, water is more important. You only last like a day without water before you start dying. What if you only bring Gatorade? Well, the problem is you need a sustainable source of water. Most people know, uh, think they know how to make a fire, but they really don't. Yeah, it's something you do have to practice. Yep. Isn't it that if you're alone in the woods, the priority is shelter, water, food? Depends. Water might be a priority even over shelter, depending. 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 Anyway, it's got electrolytes. True. 